This is the body that I got so long ago for free from a fella that had sold me a Squire and it had sort of a bum neck pocket, so he felt bad and he gave me this that he'd had kicking around. So this body has a pretty unspectacular finish in my estimation. It's not a really nice looking sunburst finish. So because of that reason, this guitar continues to be more of an experiment guitar than anything. But I need a few parts. I need a set of these bolts in order to install the bridge, because I have the bridge but none of these bolts. But I have all the electronics I need. Oh, and the other thing I really need to get this together is these screws. Anyway, so I'm not in a real panic to get this guitar together. And I haven't even drilled out the neck pocket holes for this neck yet because I had to fill them because they just, they didn't line up. But this neck is fitting on this body superbly. So those have been filled and they're just waiting for me to get to a friend's house so that I can drill them out properly with a drill press. So I'm waiting to get to a friend's to drill those out. But the real point of this video today is, yeah buddy, so my friend Eric, who is the race car driver, well he has a fuckload of tools. And he, uh, he loaned me this little kit. This body is pretty unspectacular, and I've decided to try another experiment. So I've decided to go get some inexpensive uh, primer and paint combo. It's Krylon, I'll show it to you a little bit better in a sec. But it's paint and primer, and I've had good luck with that paint in the past. So, as I said, this is an experiment. I'm doing this quick. To get to a result that I that I'm keen to see and the point of that is that that can of paint cost me five bucks this body cost me nothing this neck well it came with a sale so as far as I'm concerned it cost me nothing but before I, what I'm really keen to see here is the color combination <laughs> that's what I'm really after with this experiment I don't care if this turns out well that's not the point of this experiment I, I mean I would like for it to turn out well I'm gonna do I'm gonna be mostly careful, but I'm not, I'm not out to create a factory finish here. What I really, really want to see is if a color combination that I've chosen for another guitar that I want to repaint, and the color wheel says it does, and I've got a neat little, I, I have an, another little trick up my sleeve for, for what I'm going to do here. So you'll be happy to know that I'm wearing both eye protection and one of these masks. It's the first time I've tried this. So, I want to be safe. I don't want any of those things flying into my eyes, and I certainly don't want to breathe in whatever the hell is burning off there. So, here we go. Let's try this out. Alright, so I've been at it a bit here, uh, and i got to say, this is actually going pretty easy. Once you get the lacquer started heating up, it actually comes off uh, really quite easy. So I'm going to keep at it here and see if I can give you a bit more of a look at it. Fast as I'd like it to be, but probably because it's a 
million degrees below zero outside. But it's going really well. It is, top is completely almost stripped. Obviously this is probably better to do <laughs> in warmer weather, probably go a little faster because I suspect the areas that I'm heating up are losing some of the heat once I get away from them directly. This is not hard to do at all. The thing about it is though, you gotta clamp down the body. But let's see if I can show you how this works. It's really cool. Like peeling off a sticker. It's a bit hard to film, but this body's now been stripped. I've just been sanding away all the all the little bits of nasty old lacquer that are still still there. They were a bit hard to get off in a few places, so. Even though this is a quick and dirty project, I am still going to try and get this to look halfway decent. So in a few places where the old lacquer was stuck, it seemed to be really hard to take off on the sides. It seemed to be really hard to take off on the sides and on the back, it seemed to be a lot thinner than it was on the front. In the front, it just came off almost like in sheets heated it up, I was able to slip the knife underneath it, and it just pulled off in big sheets, but on the back, what I was expecting on the front when I started it, it just, it chipped away in a, in, in a way that I, anyway, it chipped away, it wasn't, wasn't really very nice to get off the back and the sides. So what I'm doing in a few spots here is just getting rid of some of the stubborn remaining little lacquer spots that I didn't want to heat up too much more. But I'll tell you what, for the first time I've tried that, for that being the first time I've tried that, I gotta say I'm pretty pleased with it. I'm also really pleased with how quickly it happened. <laughs> I mean, it took ages, but it was way faster. It took a couple hours to do this. So all I'm using here is a soft little sanding block, some 220 grit. Should be plenty. <laughs> Gotta be careful when you're using a little blade like this that you're not digging into your wood. Making, making a mess. All I'm doing is removing really high little, little bumps of lacquer that are left in a couple of little places of that. <laughs> So I just spent the last little while grain filling all around the outer edges and everywhere where you can see that it's plywood. So it looks a bit shit at the moment, but I'm going to sand all that down and all I really want all that in is in the cracks. Because with this one I'm trying to avoid wasting paint and material to fill all these little holes, so I'm going to go ahead and grain fill it. It's a bit of a pain to do this, but yes, I know how to do this. And yes, 
I'm absolutely using wall putty. It's no big deal. Wall putty's fine for this. Because this all this is just going to stay right in the little grain pockets. So, I have wall putty. Wall putty's cheap. It's essentially the same material as the wood filler, as far as I'm concerned. Works the same. I've used it tons of times on stuff that I've painted, so don't get your knickers out twisted. Alright, so let's get back to what we're really doing here today, shall we? I think we've had enough distractions for one day. So, I grain filled this, and now we're just coming back to take all this right down, and we don't want to leave any of this behind except what's in the little tiny hole. So I don't want big chunks of this left over. I was really quick and dirty about the way I did it, but this stuff is super easy to sand. And I only want it in the little I only want it in the little pockets. Okay. So hopefully you can see there where I've started sanding away. I, I'm not trying to leave any of this stuff behind except in just the pockets. So like these big chunks of it that I've got here because I was lazy about the way I put it on, I want to get rid of all of that. So I'm just going to come around and basically get rid of almost all of this. So this will be a bit of a boring affair to watch. I'm just going to go ahead and finish this and we'll come back when it's mostly done. Alright, there she blows, Captain. All sanded up. Ready to have uh, all this nasty stuff cleaned off of it. It's nice and smooth now. So I'll give it just a quick rub down with what does look like a dirty cloth, but I assure you it's clean. These get cleaned pretty regularly. So we're just going to give that a good dose of lighter fluid. Give that a quick rub down. In some areas it's left little pockets of this stuff, but that's okay. That's what I want. I just want it to fill those tiny little pockets just so that I'm not using lacquer and paint to fill those little holes like I've done in the past. So I'd say that's as ready as it needs to be for what I'm going to do to it. Alright, let's get that going. Okay guys, so we are back. Uh, it is an entire day later. I had filmed an entirely different ending for this video, but I want to make it quite a lot shorter, so uh, I'm just going to explain where I'm at right now, and I'm also going to apologize for skipping quite ahead to get to where I'm at right now. I didn't film any of uh, the rest of the painting process because it's just it's so cold and you just want to get in and out of the garage and do it quickly. Setting up a camera just makes that an agonizing process. But you've all seen me paint before, um, and once you see this paint job, you're going to realize why you didn't really miss anything. But I am super pleased with how this turned out. So let's finally have a look at it. There you have it. My version of Relic. Yep. So all I've done here... Okay, so yeah. Uh, I've used some of this Krylon, uh, what is it, Color Max. It's primer and paint. I've had good luck with this paint in the past, so anyway. So what I've done is I've put a real sloppy coat all over the body, and then I started to sand it down to flatten it a bit, and despite what it looks like on camera here, the finish is actually pretty flat. And what I've tried to do here is just something that I think is cool. And uh, the cool thing about this is it's really up to you. <laughs> it's really up to you how far you take this part of it. And uh, like I say, all I've done is sloppy coat of paint. Then I got at it with a piece of sandpaper and it turned out like this. 
And I gotta tell you what, <laughs> I'm hella happy with it. It looks awesome. Let's see if I can get it into the light here really well. But I'm super pleased with the way this has turned out. It looks awesome. I've left it intentionally. Let's see if I can get the bottom of it here. So I've left it intentionally beat up in areas where you'd expect it to be beat up. I can see a couple of paint drips there. I am going to get rid of those. I don't want it to look like it has paint drips. So I have a few little areas that I need to address. But apart from that, I'm totally happy with the way this came out. Totally happy. Yeah, the paint drips are unfortunate, but I still have a little bit of sanding to do. So it's not just just done, but it's mostly done. And then, I'm not sure, I haven't decided yet, but I think I'm actually going to clear coat it. So that it stays like that. I might give it just a light clear coat. Just to make it feel a bit more authentic. And give this a bit of protection. But yeah, that's going to look bitchin'. I'm super happy with the way this turned out. Alright, so hopefully this gives you a good idea of where I'm going with this thing. And hopefully my lighting doesn't suck too too bad here. Because I am, I gotta tell you, having a hard time lighting this thing. Alright, so hopefully this is a good visual indicator of the overall look I'm going for with this guitar. I do, I am missing a few bits. But, I am super pleased with the way, the direction this is heading in. I think that's going to look awesome. Yeah, so there it is. You know, just a bit, I love the contrast of that <laughs> super shiny, awesome looking rosewood fretboard. Nice shiny headstock and beat up looking old body and that color is awesome. That by the way is not the color of the pickguard that I'm going for or the color of the uh, volume tone knobs um, but I am putting those pickup covers in there. Yeah. Super, super pleased with how that turned out. Alright, anyway, so in the next installment, we'll be addressing the pickguard and some other stuff.